Hello and welcome back. And that's right, today we're looking at this. This is the Minis Forum MS. A1. Not the first time we talked about this brand, and this device here is another one of their, frankly, kind of groundbreaking workstation devices, rocking out with insane hardware, if you want it, more on that later on, in quite a weirdly small package. And in this video, I'm going to talk about this thing as a NAND. It's featuring four M.2 NVMe slots there and a removable PSU. That is to say that unlike most mini PCs which have got soldered on components and ultimately are not upgradable, this device you can pick up with with no CPU inside, no SSD, no memory. You can get the whole framework of this mini PC and you can pick it up for about 250 nicker as a mini PC ready to scale up the way you want, which is incredibly unique, especially in a four NVMe system. We've talked about loads of four NVMe systems in the world of NAS. QNAP's TS, I'm uh, sorry, uh, TBS 464. We talked about six bay devices like the Flash Store, Flash Door 6 from Acer Store there. We even talked about the TerraMaster F8. But this is a very, very compact, four bay NVMe system that if you want, you can go for the power user version, which is about 420, 430, and arrives with an AMD 8700G CPU there. That is an eight core, 16 thread, 65 TDP high CPU. That is some beefy consumer components there. Obviously, that CPU, as good as it is, it's not really the most NAS friendly CPU 24 7. You look at a lot of power consumption there. And I think we should discuss the elephant in the room very early doors. And the elephant in the room, of course, is the fact that the PSU for this device is the size of Dumbo. This is the external 240 watt power brick, and it is as heavy as it looks. But we'll come back to power consumption later on. The device, if you do get the 730 nicker option there, it's got that 8-core CPU there. It also arrives with 32 gig of DDR5 memory, non-ECC, by the way. This doesn't support ECC. The MOBO doesn't support ECC, by the way, which I know a lot of you that are looking at this as a potential NVMe flash server are going to be less in love with. But that version also arrives with a 1TB drive inside. It's a 1TB Kingston Gen 4 SSD that it arrives with with a heatsink pre-attached. The system also arrives with an additional heatsink for one of the other slots the reason being and hopefully some images will appear on screen this system has a butt ton of cooling i have never seen so much cooling in one small compact system but the keyword there is compact because let's face it this system here is gonna need to stay cool it has got three different physical operational fans inside and two enormous heatsink panels one on the top one on the bottom there keeping the cpu and keeping all the individual storage areas as cool as possible an active airflow coming out of the wazoo now the external uh, ventilation of this device, again, unsurprisingly, we've got a huge amount of ventilation there on the front. We have a huge amount of ventilation there on the back. We have a huge amount of ventilation there on the top. You can see the fans as well. And a huge amount of ventilation there on the base. So this thing knows it's going to get hot. And even if you don't go for the 730 nickel one and you go for the base, choose your own CPU model for 260 that is a great amount of cooling for a mini PC. There are very, 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 very few um, DIY, truly CPU DIY, choose your own mini PCs in the market like this. And of course, you're probably thinking, with that many fans, this thing's going to be noisy as all hell. And do you know what? I'm not going to say it was silent, but later on we'll talk more about the testing. But when we actually did our heaviest testing on this, with around 500 individual 1 gig file transfer tests on every SSD bay inside, and the CPU loading up an OS, and on top of that, afterwards running scrubbing, we got the system only at around 36 to 40 dBA with all of the fans going.
I know what you're thinking, temperature. And when we had 500 individual write operations happening on all four of those SSDs and the CPU doing numbers, the peak temperature we saw at the highest point was 79 to 80 degrees on the four times four slot more on the slots and lanes later on now i know you're thinking that is throttle point on an ssd and you're absolutely right but keep in mind is that was an incredibly unrealistic test and that ssd did not reach that point until the end of the 500 one gigabyte write operations on rotation onto that drive the fact that it hit 80 at the end of that testing while all the other drives were doing it with all of that cooling was phenomenally impressive, especially when you look at the other SSDs, which are obviously on different lane speed, again, more on that later, with all of that going on inside the system, to not go louder than 36 to 40 dBA with all of those fans, and I might add, power consumption with that higher end 8700G CPU, uh, only reaching 75 to 77 watts in that peak, unrealistic period was impressive i'm not going to say any of the numbers i've just said are low i'm going to say they are low relative to the sheer mega thunder test that i was doing when i talk about the power consumption the idle power consumption when we had the system just sitting around with unraid in idle and again unraid via a usb it only achieved 27 to 28 watts and that was with that big beef bad cpu sitting there inside with all of the memory the storage and all of those four bays and all of the fans there's a very, very good power consumption numbers inside. But bringing things much more back into the realm of network attached storage, let's actually talk about that storage. I'm going to have to get in front of a few of you in the comments. Unfortunately, that little prototype board that we were sent uh, about a month or two ago from Minis Forum, unfortunately, does not fit inside this device. You can't add an additional bunch of slots inside this. This only supports the MS01, something we've reviewed before as a NAS, and spoiler alert is still the better option for me between these two but for a scalable option this is really doing it for me but the uh, four m.2 nvme slots inside we jumped into unraid and went into the terminal we're able to ascertain that one of the slots uh, the primary slot was a four times four speed slot then there was a four times two slot then there was a four times one slot and then there was a three times four slot so immediately you're thinking as a nas that is an absolute car wreck when it comes to lane distribution there because if you try to raid across all of those drives you're going to be throttled by the slowest one and do you know what you're absolutely right so let's actually talk about some of the performance we achieved on there during some of those tests now when we went for the heavy uh, read operation uh, we achieved respectively from the fastest to the slowest slot uh, 5.1 gigabytes per second 4.8 gigabytes per second 2.9 gigabytes per second and 1.6 gigabytes per second which for each of those individual lanes was Pretty good, as far as I'm concerned there. I wasn't so sure about the three times four slot, only achieving 1.6, but the rest of them seemed all right for what I was seeing there. Now, when it comes to the right uh, slots there, again, none of these are going to be as high as the traditional synthetic ones, but these are hardly realistic tests. In the right test performance there, we saw 4.8 gigabytes per second, 4.6 gigabytes per second, 2.8 gigabytes per second, and 1.5 gigabytes per second there so again raiding them all together there you're going to see mixed results but what i kind of was disappointed by was when i went in and started moving data between ssds internally transfers of one gigabyte of data creation being copy and read between two drives i went for the fastest two drives and i only achieved between 500 and 550 megs that was the two Gen 4 times 4 and Gen 4 times 2 slots there. Again, only around 500 megs internal handover for the data between those two drives. So then I was like, okay, what about the slowest drives? So now I went for the Gen 4 times 1 and the Gen 3 times 4 slot. And I again, only saw speeds of between 5 to 500 megs, which seemed to indicate to me that there is definitely comes a shared lane between all of these. Uh, a uh, PCI switch that they're all going into that unfortunately is going to throttle them. So that means that even if these were all four times four or they were all brought down to say three times four via bifurcation, you're still only going to get, based on this architecture, around 500 megs distribution in the back end. Now, that's not going to be so bad, but there's still no avoiding that you know, it's a big drop off there compared with some of the five and four gigabytes per second performance numbers that we were just talking about. None of these really, by the way, were achieving the highest uh, Gen 4 or Gen 5 speeds for their respective gens. But I will say still, uh, not Gen 5, Gen 4 or Gen 3 speeds for their respective gens there, but still 
I was still pleased with the performance when, with regards to the temperature and such. And also keep in mind that the CPU you choose to use will make a big difference on the lane distribution there, which is when you're going to have to roll up your sleeves and dig into that BIOS to find out more. There's a lot of BIOS controls in the back end there for this, but again, your CPU is going to heavily reflect the lane distribution internally there for your drives or at least the capacity now we've got to talk about ports and connections because there's some good and there's some bad on the front of the device we have got three individual usb ports each one of them we've got a usb type a type a type a in gen 3 times 2 uh, uh 10 gig on two of them and one of them just a standard USB 2. On the rear of the device, we have um, further USB type A slots there and a type C slot there. And that type C, by the way, is a USB 4 output there. There is also an OcuLink port there, which is interesting, but we have to talk about it. Alongside those HDMI ports, fairly standard HDMI 2.1, um, there is only 2.5 gig on this device. There is no means to upgrade it via a PCIe slot there. This doesn't have a PCIe, and that really puts it behind to the MS-01 that we talked about before by comparison. There's still a great little box, but I will say that lack of scalability in the world of NAS is going to be problematic there. But we also have to acknowledge that because this system has got a fantastic amount of USB ports and a USB 4 point port, depending on the operating system you choose to use, you can add five gig adapters and you can add 10 gig adapters. Again, Thunderbolt 4 and Thunderbolt and USB 4 10 g adapters are a thing. And depending on the operating system you're gonna use in this, there is an element of usability. Uh, now, if you go into something like Unraid, Unraid has a fantastic arrangement of different drivers available in their app center or within the repositories to enable adapters like these and add further network ports. Again, they're not all there. On the same way, you can go for some other NAS systems that won't give you that flexibility. You can still go to something like GitHub, and we've already talked several times on the channel about uh, GitHub NAS um, kind of Parallel creators like BBQQ and Dave Russell who create a lot of driver modifications to allow third-party adapters like these to work in NAS systems. And this is going to be a great deal more of a flexible play field for stuff like that in terms of development. Also, OcuLink, 64 gigabits per second output there for an external GPU or an external PCIe slot. It does mean you're going to be able indirectly to add PCIe cards to this. Again, depending on the ones you go for, they've got their own external GPU dock there, and indeed an external GPU in a box that you can just plug in with OcuLink. But there's also just standard OcuLink external PCIe adapters that allow you to add PCIe cards, which again will allow for larger network connections. That will kind of muddy the waters in terms of creating this mini PC NAS architecture SSD flash setup. But there's no avoiding that there is at least ways to scale this up. Now, there's going to be some of you, rightly so, going, well, I'm not spending 700 nicker on something that's going to be a pain in the ass to upgrade. And you know what? You're right. But I didn't tell you to spend 700 odd nicker. Go for the 230, 250, 260 nicker option that's got no CPU memory and SSD inside and scale it up your way. And it'll allow you to create your very own compact, stupidly fast flash system with the CPU you want to do. Again, this is something I'm prone to say a lot on the channel, but I will say it here again. It is very hard to build this DIY and get it to the same standard. A lot of users will look at NAS devices like these and go, yeah, it'd be cheaper to build it myself. And in some cases, you're absolutely right. But I defy you to build this for less than $259. I just don't think it's possible. And again, I'm removing memory. I'm removing uh, SSD. I'm removing CPU. I love a mini PC that has an interchangeable CPU that has the ability to scale things my way. And for that reasoning, I think this could be a very, very good DIY flash NAS. But just keep in mind, there's caveats. There are limitations and it's not perfect for it. And if you've already sold yourself on the idea of getting hold of a mini PC and convert it into your own flash server, I can't stress enough, one, the MS-01 with two 10G NICs on board and up to an Intel 13th Gen i9 on board is a phenomenal choice, alternatively. And it has a PCIe slot 
and it has USB-C Thunderbolt 4 slots, it is a more easy and flexible upgradable solution. It just means you're going to be locked in on a lot of that hardware. And, who knows, Minis Forum might actually release this sodding thing one day commercially. But, this has been the MSA1 as a NAS. Is it worth going for? If you have been on the market finding out more about this device and you're looking for reviews on it as a mini PC, shout out again to Lorio over at Technomis. He did like a review for this thing weeks ago about it as a mini PC. I recommend it. I'll link it in the description. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching and have yourselves a fantastic week.